Hey, how are you doing, lovely people? Hey. <laughs> How's everybody doing? I hope you're great no matter where you're watching our YouTube podcast from or listening to our podcast in the world. Thank you so much for being with us and joining us. My name is Bliss and I'm Star. My beautiful partner, Star. We are together going to bring you the Master Dreamer podcast. And it is going to be about, uh, this is going to be so exciting. Uh, okay, let me just tell you why we even decided to do the podcast. And then I'm going to tell you what the podcast is about. So just like many people from all around the world, we have also experienced a lot of hardship and heartache and, you know, just stress and anxiety because of COVID. And before COVID, you know, we, we were still doing our businesses. I had my businesses, she had hers. And, uh, but COVID just really kicked everything into the next gear, uh, putting us, you know, to keeping us home and not letting us do anything, took my business away, took my complete livelihood away. By the way, I put a video um, on our YouTube channel on that. So I don't want to get into it too much, but through that hardship and experience, we had to both of us look internally inside us and start finding some real hard answers. The most important question that kind of started in my head, first of all, was after losing everything, who am I? That was the most important question because I all of a sudden figured that everything stopped. The world came to a complete pause. Lost. Hey. Woo. You good, baby? <laughs> so I felt like the, the business is lost. All of my, you know, culmination of 15 years of my life is now gone. And, you know, I loved what I did and I worked for my passion and was, you know, it never felt like working for me. And I was like, you know, everybody kept on telling me, do what you love. Everything's going to work out and everything's going to be great. But nothing worked out and I lost everything. So kind of brought me to the point where I had to question a lot a lot and that's where the journey begins and that's where the idea of this podcast came because me and star we started finding a lot of answers and we started thinking you know on you know what does life mean what are we doing here what's our purpose what's uh who are we and all these very very fundamental questions that are so deep and they've really boggled humankind for boggled the minds of humankind for you know, millions of years. And uh, for the most time, we choose to ignore them, but it was time for us to face them. Uh, I kept on writing journals down and I was like, uh, all right, instead of writing everything, why don't we just do a once a week video journal, me and her for our future selves? Because, you know, in 30 years, I like to know what was the state of mind of mine and hers 30 years back. Because I think that would have been absolutely fantastic if today I had, uh, you know, my state of mind from 30 years ago. But uh, yeah, so that's what this podcast for. This is really our video journal where we're going to talk about our progress. Um, we are about three months, four months into the, I guess, the birth of our new ser selves and... Uh, our journey but hey it's never too late uh, we figured that we should start and by doing this our intention is obviously to have a record of ourselves for our future but most importantly we are investing a lot of time a lot of effort a lot of energy a lot of money and a lot of really brain power and networking power to bring a lot of people that we know are also like-minded and want to kind of pull themselves out of the hardship and make themselves better and improve themselves and make the 2.0 versions of themselves or really find themselves and in doing so i thought it is only fair that we share this journey with you all uh, if you're watching this or listening to this from anywhere in the world because I'm sure 100% we are not the only people who are right now going through these difficult times. And this is not going to end. After COVID, before COVID, there's always been hard times for people. 
it's just that right now we are experiencing the pain and we are going through this as a global population together but uh, moving forward especially as a time of aquarius is kicking in and there's a lot of channeling energy from you know all the celestial systems up there they're waking a lot of humans up uh, and as the name of this episode is it is called the awakening because it is a story of my awakening with star and uh, you know obviously uh, i wanted to kind of kick in and give the intro to this episode uh, by the way it is star's first ever podcast <laughs> <laughs> thank you for agreeing to do this with me she wants to by the way do her own uh podcast very soon and uh for now she's being uh my uh tag along and she's being my partner in this uh she's always welcome to come by and when she starts her own podcast y'all gonna enjoy hers too and um I'm very excited for what she's going to do. Uh, I'm actually very excited for something else to start. We were talking about this, right? I'm excited to f to to let everybody know because we know a lot of people uh, because of my job. Uh, you know, I used to DJ from all, you know, all around the world, uh, thousands of people at, at a time in events. And uh, I had that blessing for many years. Uh, led me to opening of my own bar which went down because of covid uh, i'm gonna ask start to tell you how she started everything but just the fact that we went all around the world and we did a lot of functions i met a lot of beautiful souls and you know made acquaintances with a lot of people who got gotten to know me because of the tv show that i'm in the radio shows that i had and all that kind of stuff everybody thinks they have a perception of the person they are following or they like but that perception is only made up in their mind and cannot be further from the truth of who that person is so here's our opportunity me and star to tell the world who we are what we're made of and kind of put it out there so everybody else also feels like they could be themselves too. That's very important. Authentic. Be yourself. So with that said, Star, baby, tell us about what you were doing kind of in a quick snapshot of how you got to where we are today. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Just go with it. Oh, my God. Like ever since I kind of was independent or like, I don't know, semi-independent, I was always working mm -hmm. what do you mean like bring the mic a little bit uh -huh. up no uh -huh. no no push higher. it up a little bit yeah like yeah that? yeah a little bit higher higher than that yeah <laughs> okay good yeah so i always thought like i'm a doer i'm an achiever i was always wanted to work 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 and you know get to the top and you know just work my ass off and do good things and all of a sudden this happened and it changed my whole perspective in life okay but before that was that was too quick of a snapshot <laughs> let's go a little bit further back uh so i used the dj i i did many things we're gonna by the way talk a lot about what we've done but this show is not about because me and star as i said know what we've done and we don't want to kind of keep on putting it out here as i said this is a video journal as well as sharing our ongoing experiences and learnings uh, but we're gonna here and there drop things because they're gonna be necessary within the context but for now, I think it is important that Star shares with us her context because me and Star, by the way, like the the hardships that I'm talking about, uh, we're going to get to the financial parts. We're going to get to the emotional parts. There are many like it's a multi-layered issue that every human is now experiencing with. But I want to kind of put it out there. That's where Star came from. Uh, Star, you <laughs> used to do modeling. Then you used to do retail. Then you used to do, tell us. Okay, I, I went to school for nursing. Um, I graduated uh, in um, fashion management. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I used to do modeling as a teenager. I stopped modeling when I was 21, 22. Um, I got myself into the retail management after... I worked in the retail management for a long time. What else did I do? I started my own company. Um, 
Which, yeah. by the way, that that's a whole story of its own, guys. Like that, when that story comes out, I I I'm I'm gonna be glued to my chair because the way she did it is all on her own, and she started something that's just very big right now, and I'm so proud of her. But anyways, not to kind of blow each other's horns, but go on. Sorry, love. Yeah, so I started my own company, and it's been over five years that I've had my own company, and Ooh. everything was doing good, and everything was great, and you know, um, you had bigger plans come in. And yeah, you, I, I wanted. You just to, opened your own new store, right? Yeah, like, I just opened up my flagship store. Yes, a storefront, a very beautiful location in Richmond Hill, in the heart of Richmond Hill, actually. Uh, the funny thing is you just got that store and you were about to do your grand opening <laughs> when we got the shutdown. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, so she worked so hard and w built the place up with so much love, put it together, kind of, you know, I, the thing is people don't want to talk about themselves and I understand really why, but so I'm going to say a few things that she doesn't want to say. <laughs> so she put so much love and heart into her third location which was the biggest one which is where she's at right now the and she just literally designed this beautiful like how do you how do you explain your place I don't know, mystical majestic girly i don't know say just place. like beautiful and pink that's like <laughs> <laughs> just this really easy to put it that way is this beautiful gorgeous pink place it's like a barbie house everybody says so uh, she put this place together such a fine job and just as about as she was about to launch and do a soft opening and grand opening the we whole shutdown happened shot <laughs> <laughs> in canada yep uh that was what march 18th 2020 that's when the shutdown and the shutdown happened and that was by the way nine months into my uh bar g spots uh the fantastic run which we had to stop that so tell me uh how did how did that how did how did it go when we stopped because so, this is the story of our awakening right so let's just get us to the point so i think for like four months four months and a half we were closed mm -hmm. and i got to actually finally open my store august 1st 2020 um after having it for a whole year because i got my keys to my store august of 2019 so i had a whole year i did all the renovations constructions put everything together i was ready to open in march and then shutdown happened and i couldn't open till august so august we were allowed to open again but now you're fast forwarding what happened in march how did we feel because what when everything got closed and shut down a lot of people in the world were basically in the same place. Yeah. So we were both doing what for the first few months? We were kicking it back. A <laughs> we lot of Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, just basically doing nothing. <laughs> but but you know I I I was a workaholic, and I've always yeah. been an achiever and a doer. So mm -hmm. even though I couldn't physically be at my store and work, mm -hmm. I was still working on my business. I was or I was getting new products in new product lines still working on them you know still trying to grow my business so yeah for the first few weeks we had a great time and then you know I was still working but it was kind of like you know I don't know <laughs> just couldn't do much cause... what do you mean you were still working how were you working when everything was shut down um I worked on my falsies line I came up with a fal whole falsies line. I remember. So that's I came better. up with yeah. a lip gloss line. That's right. Not actually a lip gloss line. Um, um, a whole line of lip gloss lines, which were organic, um, with no preservatives. Um, everything was natural and healthy for, you know, people. So, yeah, I worked on those two. And other than that, there was not much I could have done because there was no income coming in. Mm-hmm. And there was not much we could do. Okay, so where's the next milestone in that, in your journey? When we got to open? No. Sure. Which was August. Then you open. It was good. And then shut down again back in what? December. November. December? November. November yes, of 2020. So she opens in August and she has to shut down again in December or end of November. I can't recall exactly. And ever since then, 
until now, which is what, uh, February 16th, 2021, we're still in a shutdown. So, (laughs) (laughs) so uh, tell me this, how do you compare the first shutdown with a second shutdown experience? Because they're completely different right now for us. Yeah. Um, Again, like, like I said, the first shutdown, I was still trying to work on my business, still trying to grow it with the little power that I had um we were still trying like go out and have fun we wanted to move to greek if you remember greece Greece, if you remember greece greece yeah and then the second shutdown when it happened i was actually excited for because if you remember (laughs) (laughs) i was exhausted ever since i opened in august i kind of worked like five six seven days a week i would wake up at like 8 30 go to work stay till work i would come back home usually about like 10 10 30 sometimes 11 11 30 at night and yeah it was a lot of work you know especially just because like it was like the first few months of me opening my brand new store so i was exhausted and i could i would hear people that there might be a shutdown. There might be another shutdown. There might be another lockdown. That itself just takes all of your energy away, by the way. It's really depleting. I remember you were like, oh, you're going to shut us down again. It's going to be another shutdown. Yeah. yeah. But but I was, I was, I, I needed a break. <laughs> you <And> were kind of <laughs> like half looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's and, right. And, you know, when the shutdown happened, then I couldn't like believe that there's a shutdown and I'm like fuck like I want to go to work now like I can't be home seven days a week what am I gonna do that's right so I wanted it but when it happened I didn't want it anymore (laughs) it was funny (laughs) is that like isn't that like a typical like human thing we always want what we don't have but then when we have it you just don't want it anymore yeah that's always the case that's always the case always okay so go on I mean if you're not awake that's right. right if you're not <laughs> that's a very good point yes yeah so what do you want me to say right so are we like up to date there okay so we're kind of up to date with where she feels like how star's story was going and let me let me i guess kind of elaborate on my story because ever since that after that first intro video i didn't put any update videos on our channel Oh boy, it's going to be a while. Uh, yeah, actually, it's not even that bad. It's pretty good. It's, it was very good all the way across and all the way around. Uh, so for the first shutdown, for me, it was still like, oh yeah, we're going to get back to work. It's going to be a few months. Then we're going to open up. And then that was March. And then goes into April, May, June, July. And then by July, me and my partners are like, oh my God, what do we do? Again, I talked about that, but then the, the the cost was just overbearingly like exorbitant on us. It was just piling up, 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 up. Just the rent alone was like $20,000 a month on our location. So uh, with doing zero business, it was really racking up quickly. And uh, my partner, he's, he's very smart. So very, very smart, wise businessman and very successful one, actually, as a matter of fact, whom I'm, I'm going to bring at one point into one of these. And uh, he said, he turned to me, he said, listen, man, this whole thing's not going to finish anytime soon. Let's just not kid ourselves. Let's just get our stuff, move on and kind of just cut our losses early. All right. So. There goes, what, $1.3 million cutting, cutting our losses, which I'm glad we did because as he 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 stated, this doesn't look like it's going to end anytime soon. And uh, that became a big shock for me. Now, mind you, everybody who knows me, uh, when I'm talking to my close friends during this time and I was telling them, hey, guys, like I was going, I was battling a depression for like three, four years. People are like, what? Get over like you want me to you want us to be sad about it no 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 for me nobody could believe that i had a depression but some people when you actually came out and told them that you had a depression they're like oh you want us to feel bad about it like oh yeah yeah. you know some people were like that too oh you're talking about like youtube i'm not talking about youtube i'm talking about our real friends like our friends in real life 
when I was discussing with them that, hey, like, because a lot of people were feeling down. And by the way, guys, like the World Health Organization is even saying that because of COVID and lockdowns and losing businesses and homes and relationships and so many other things that are happening, the, there is a crisis with emotional wellness of uh, and mental state of uh, humanity around the world where it is becoming almost another crisis on top of the first crisis, right? So what's really bad is that we are not we're completely ignoring the the mental health and the emotional wellness of our state of being and we're only focusing on things such as oh we don't have money oh my god what do i do about my job which is disastrous because we are having young people who had never actually uh committed suicide now they're committing suicides and the, the suicide rate is going up too which is not a good thing at all um <clears throat> sorry uh yeah payam actually uh brought up something interesting which actually shows like uh you know the number of people who are reporting symptoms of anxiety and depressive disorder during the covid which is which is true it's a fact like if you look at it the number of people between the ages of 18 to 24 we got 58 percent uh you know who are actually saying they're dealing with stress anxiety and depressive disorders we are keeping them out of school you know we are not allowing them to go and do what they should do socialize with other humans and you know gather the skills they need to make it into the society and anyways the whole thing is back to my point thank you payam it was it got to a point where I was hearing so many of my friends going through depression because of it. And I reached out to a few that I knew intimately because, you know, I wouldn't want to impose on anybody. I reached out to a few and we really had this great talk, but uh, where I kind of told them how I got out of my depression after dealing with, you know, uh, psychologists and dealing with uh, even going to the brink of taking medication. I, I went right to the tip of it, but I didn't go through and follow through with it. But when I was talking to my friend about, hey, like, listen, I'm in the boat with you and like, let's, I'm going to help you out and you help me out. Uh, there was a friend of mine that I was speaking with. Uh, he said to me, he's like, what are you talking about? You're like the celebrity persian dj of canada like you're all over the place you're always on the stage jumping up and down people come to want to take photos with you how are you depressed and i said oh boy you don't even know the beginning of it you know like and that's the important thing about depression that's the important thing about mental health you never know just because somebody's happy like how many how many actors and celebrities did we lose to depression or kate spade kate spade was a big big designer and she committed suicide there you go the name keeps on coming uh i know payam is going to tell me who i'm thinking about robin williams thank you i knew he was going to say that yeah. robin williams robin the williams if you watched his movies he's always this happy energetic beautiful soul and you're like what when you have uh, celebrities like michael jackson you know he actually overdosed you have amy winehouse overdose you have so many of these so many of them so guys ladies if you're out there please don't take somebody who is joking around and making other people have fun or even the joker in the crowd the the fun guy in the crowd the fun girl in the crowd don't ever think assume. that yeah don't assume anything please don't think that they are not dealing with depression don't think depression is not doesn't know age it doesn't know race it doesn't know sex it doesn't know anything no it's, social status yes we're gonna actually get to the reasons of depression which is really interesting actually uh it's so simple when you think about depression because i literally had an epiphany where i came to a point that it was just so bad that that's how the awakening happened to be honest with you uh, the awakening happened because it got to a point where I called my doctor during COVID, during the second lockdown. And I said, hey, doc, like, I know you've been saying it to me and I've been trying to resist for the longest time not to take meds. But I think it's time because I'm literally like feeling I would not want to wake up, you know, be in bed until 2, 1 p.m., 2 p.m., not want to roll out, not want to do anything. I would just walk around the house and just be like, oh, my God, what do I do? Just sometimes I would just stare at a wall just zero motivation because i was trying to like you know what it is as i said at the beginning i was trying to avoid the real question of what am i doing 
What is my purpose? What do I need to do? I thought I had figured it out for the longest time. I thought my job was my passion. It was my purpose. And I thought it was my calling, but really it was just at the time what my passion was. It was not my purpose, definitely not my calling, but I kind of had everything all mixed up. So, um, there was a point that literally I asked for the medication. My doctor was like, yeah, I'm going to send you the medication. Who do you want me to send it to? And during this like one or two days where they were trying to send me the, uh, the, the prescription and I was going to go to the pharmacy and pick it up, a good friend of mine came by, um, our, our friend Hafez, uh, this is a very good uh, videographer, uh, director and producer. He's actually shout outs to Hafez, by the way. Uh, he came and he introduced me to this amazing, amazing book. He said, Bliss, I need you to read this book. It's so good. I read it. I really enjoyed it. I said, what is it? Because, hey, I was just sitting home doing nothing. So I was like, yeah, what is it? He's like, The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. I was like, oh, okay, what is it about? He's like, yeah, it's just like really good. I was like, all right, cool, whatever. So we were just sitting beside each other. I literally bought the book on Audible and completely forgot about it. The next day we wake up, I'm about to like go out, buy some groceries. I put my ear pods, start listening to the preface of the book. And within the first two minutes, I was like, oh, holy crap, this book is for real. Then I listen to the intro, like to the, to the introduction. And then I'm like, oh my God, what, what? Okay. So just the intro introduction of the book, I had to go back and listen to literally seven times. I was like, no, I'm not moving on before I completely understand this because it just really resonated with me. It just sat so deep. It sat so well. And I was like, oh my God, this is, this is real. This is, this is real. This book is not beating around the bush. It's not trying to sell me something. It's not trying to sell me, you know, magic or spells or it's not doing any of that. It's literally just giving me facts. And um, if anybody's having problem and if, if you really want some clarity, I suggest to all of you, that is one of the first books that I suggest. Uh, it's that and uh, Sorry. baby. <laughs> <laughs> You liking those stones? Mm. <laughs> uh, that and Untethered Soul by uh, Michael Singer. That, Michael A. Singer. Oh, thank you. The A uh, middle name initial definitely will make a difference in that book lookup. I maybe would. But those two books absolutely can change your lives if you're ready for it. If you know you're hurting and you're looking for answers and you want to change, guys, stop listening to anything else not this one <laughs> continue <laughs> listening to this um but no for real like you want to actually find your way out of trouble those are the two books you need to read because they're not about life lessons they're not about telling you what to do they're literally only telling you how to break your understandings your agreements with yourself and with your life and with your people around you in order to change your life when you start a new one. Oh, what did you do Wh which one is it no start a new life oh I, th I thought you said i started a new book i'm like what <laughs> honestly uh, these days me and star are like on a like spree like just running around and just getting new books new material new stuff it's just such a beautiful feeling star I'm talking too much. You got to tell us how you feel these days. Like, and, and tell me about, so that was my story of awakening. And then from there, one thing led to the next, led to the next, which is going to be continued after Star tells me a little bit about how she got to the point where she got. To. I just want to add one thing before that. If anyone wants to change their lives, they have to do it willingly and they have to be open to new ways of changing. Mm -hmm. um, if you are going to be 100% stuck with your old ways, Mm -hmm. and your old routines and you don't want to you know budge then it's That's not right. gonna work at all 100 percent. the only reason your life is ever gonna change if that's if you're 100 percent willing to do anything and try anything to change your life the change starts within yeah. really if you if you don't feel and appreciate what your life is on the outside you must change things inside 
that is so imperative to understand. If you don't like your finances, you must change insight. You must change your understanding. Go, go get yourself rich that, poor that. Read that book if you want to only update and influence your finances by just running after more hustles, by trying to, you know, uh, chop some drugs or the, do the easy way out or make some mm, shortcuts or, you know, opening a fan only page. You're not going to be able to get that money that you want because at the end of the day, it all starts here and ends here. Thank you, Evie. Continuing on. So what was I going to say? You were saying you wanted to just make that point, which you did. Now I asked you, how did your kind of awakening come about? And you were going to tell us that. Because you told us until the December lockdown yeah. and then I took over and now it's yeah. you. So technically, I thought I was living my life. I was happy with everything else. I was happy with my relationships. Thank God. My partner was great. Is great. My family is Who's great. Who's your partner? <laughs> um, I my relationship with my friends are amazing. It's always been great. Um, I love my job. I always loved my work. Whatever I did, I always did it willingly. I never did anything that I was never happy about. I was I wasn't one of those people that's like I have to do this because of money or if my parents told me to do this or if my my partner asked me to do it. If I was not happy with it, it doesn't, it didn't matter who told me to do it, I wouldn't do it. So anyways, yeah, I thought I was having a great life. Um, you know, everything was great until you came and started <laughs> <laughs> telling me that, babe, I'm going through changes. <laughs> Remember, uh, you should add the song from... Um, What's that cartoon uh, thing? Big Mouth. Yeah. I'm, I'm going, going through change. <laughs> I love that cartoon. Yeah. So you came and you're like, babe, I'm going through changes. And, you know, like, I feel like it's so like light. It's like the changes are so huge that it's so drastic. Yeah. If yeah, you don't understand true. what I'm going through, like he, you were truly worried about our relationship. And we've been together for nine years. That's right. And we've invested time and love and, you know, everything into the relationship. Emotions, yeah, yeah. And you obviously didn't want it to go down the drain. So I was like, what do you mean? Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> what do you mean you're going through changes? Like, what kind of changes? And you kept on telling me. And I was just like not understanding what you're saying and at one point i thought like you're going crazy and i'm like holy yeah. shit like what I is you talking told me. about you told me that and like Are i would try crazy? so hard to understand what you're <laughs> saying and i just i just couldn't it just didn't you know click with me how did it feel like at that and moment it when felt I was like talking? i honestly felt like i'm from planet earth and you're from planet like mars or That's from right. the moon and we're on two different planets and i was like holy shit like what the hell is happening we've been together for nine months and all of a sudden like we're not understanding each all other. of a sudden after a few i don't know to me it seemed like a very small few weeks few days mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you're this whole complete different person trying to get get me on the same plane as you and i'm here trying hard to understand and i'm like I just can't understand him and like i tried so hard and he kept on telling me and like explaining to me what he's going through and trying you know to tell me what he's going through and i was like holy shit like i tried so hard to a point that like i couldn't even keep it to myself and i'm like you're cuckoo <laughs> like you've gone crazy and i have no idea what you're talking about and like I, I, I just don't understand you anymore. What the hell's happening to you? That's and cool. I'm like, what happened to my boyfriend? Like, what the hell am I going to do? Because like, it was just so insane. And well, you didn't give up. I didn't give up. And you're like, I'm not going to go anywhere until you actually tell me that you don't want me in this relationship anymore. And you don't want me to be in it. And I was trying to understand too. So... You kept on telling me to read the four agreements and I'm like, okay, you know what? I've spent nine years with this guy. This relationship has been amazing and I'm just going to read this book. I'm going to give it my all and see where it goes. 
and I read it and it changed my life and I'm like holy shit <laughs> <laughs> and then one thing led to another and you know we are where we are today oh man okay so yeah. guys this is very important actually I think probably from this episode of awareness and the awakening sorry the awakening this part that she just touched on is probably one of the most important things that I feel like everybody needs to pay attention to because when somebody's going through uh, changes <laughs> <laughs> no but seriously when somebody's going through an awakening experience the way you start understanding processing and dealing with life is completely devastatingly different and i'm not saying it's better or worse it's just completely different than it is with like prior to the awakening because and, and that difference is so vast that, as she said, it felt like I was on the moon, she was on a different planet, or I was on Earth. doesn't matter. We we're on two different planets. There was no understanding each other. Like, we would, like, the thing is, a lot of people correlate awakening with becoming spiritual, whereas in reality, it couldn't be further from the truth. Yes, you can take this spiritual way of awakening, or you could just awaken from the sleep that we are all in the long sleep and just ground yourself and understand the moment and understand that whatever you're experiencing is just a manifestation it's just really done in your brain it's it's just it's inside you anything you're feeling anything anything negative anything positive that's all the awakening process is i don't understand why some people make it so difficult awakening is not a difficult thing it's just that we our egos by we i mean our egos that we have built throughout our lives put up this fight because our egos don't want to be shattered because when you awaken you realize that everything you believe is nothing but your beliefs and there are eight billion different dreams happening at the same time over this planet every one of them is right in its own way every one of them believes that they're 100 percent right and there's nothing wrong with what they do and the awakening is really just like, okay, so this is how I feel and that's how you feel. Cool, I'm right, you're right. We're both experiencing life through different eyes and through different bodies. And there is nothing wrong with what you want to do. You know, you're this religion, I'm that religion. You're this politics, I'm that politics. At the end of the day, we're all humans. We all got to get together. We are on Mother Gaia. We've come from this beautiful earth. And hopefully if we don't mess it up before we are gone, we're going to go back to the same mother earth and that is literally the awakening now most people get so consumed with the daily chores of lives you know every day i want to wake up i got to go to work then i got to get my coffee then i want to get my newspaper i want to get my uh, podcast listened to in the car then i want to see what the news says oh shit i got to work i got this project now i'm tired i want to go back home on the way home i gotta buy this then i gotta have dinner then you're all drained because emotionally you're all done you go home if you're lucky you have a dinner with each other which was by the way us too right like before this whole yeah, thing yeah yeah like what was it before like what was it like before yeah, right the yeah same it thing. was like that i would wake up in the morning shower go to work stay at work by the time i was home it was 10 30 11 11 30 sometimes eat something just watch just sit on the couch and you know watch something and before i know i couldn't i i loved movies i loved watching tv and it was it was to a point that i couldn't even watch past 20 minutes of anything i would like literally sit on a couch and i would just pass out yeah the thing is i would say 80 to 85 percent of the earth population of human beings are doers and once you're a doer you want to achieve stuff you want to get to places you always set goals that you want to achieve that's right you start living for future and you start setting goals and you start and, becoming you know it's 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 not a bad thing it's not necessarily a bad thing it's an amazing thing it is within all of us it is a bad thing when you stop living life 
and everything that you do is only for you to do so Results you're able oriented. to exactly yeah. result oriented you don't goal oriented yeah you don't want to become goal oriented and that's the biggest problem that that's the biggest thing that happens when you don't wake up you're, and and you yeah. know i i personally don't blame anyone yeah, ever since you're little your parents expectations of you is usually to get that a plus you know um when you go to med- elementary school middle school high school it's kind of expected for you to do your best, which is not a bad thing necessary. It's amazing that your parents are motivating you and, you know, pushing you to do your best. But it gets bad at a point where everything in life becomes you achieving your best and not enjoying the process. You know, everything becomes about the destination versus the journey. So I know a lot of parents, when their kids don't get an A+, they get anything below an A+. Instead of, you know, telling them that it's okay, it's the experience that you got, you know, see what you did wrong so you, you know, fix it later to learn, they always try to push their kids to get that A+. Like, it's Mm -hmm. always the A+, that matters to them. It doesn't matter if the kid is learning, if the kid is liking what they're learning, if they have difficulties to see like where they have difficulties to help them. It's not about the journey for them. It's always about the destination. Mm-hmm. And when you tell your kids at a very young age that you know, you're know you going to school to get a good mark, so hopefully you can go to school, university, and get a proper job so you can you know finance yourself and later on form a family and be independent and have a great life, quote unquote. Well, everything is becoming a, a result. Everything is becoming result, result, result. result. Exactly. Go to school, so get a good mark, saying, get a good mark, get a degree, people. get a degree, get a job, get a job, get a family. To, to them coming from their parents which is like their their first role models in life it's like if you're not having a good job that's going to give you this much money or if you're not going to get a certain mark because that that shows that you're doing good in school then you're not doing good in life but that doesn't mean anything just because somebody gets an a plus doesn't mean that they have learned that what they went to school for Because, you know, you can go, you can memorize something, and after a week, you forget everything. That doesn't mean you learn something. I mean, to oversimplify what you just said, just because you go to school doesn't mean you learn anything. You're saying if just because you you get a mark. I'm saying there are, we know many people, all of us, you too, when you're watching or listening to this, you know people who are educated, but they don't know anything. Or they don't have a happy life. It's... I'm saying even within their own field, I know many people who have PhDs, but how much can a human brain remember from 18 years of schooling? You can't. You're by default only going to remember the things that you're most likely to use on a daily basis. What you use on a daily basis, you'll remember. Everything else goes to the back of the subconscious memory if you're lucky right like uh, think about it like oh grade 12 physics do you remember anything from that class no but my point is when you become results oriented oh yes you're never gonna be you're never gonna appreciate the journey oh yeah oh yeah you're always you always want to achieve the destination without enjoying your journey of course because by by by, by definition when you're looking towards the results you're never going to be enjoying right now you're always looking to the next 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 so uh, it's it's an interesting thing if if you do let's say fit, uh, set a goal of making you know a thousand dollars for yourself within i don't know a week okay by the time a week comes and even if you made a thousand dollars it is no longer a moment that you're going to take celebrate and enjoy yourself because at that moment you have already set the next goal because you knew you're going to make a thousand dollars from three days before you're going to so be you like, never had that moment of appreciation right. and celebration and enjoyment yes yeah, so you're going to say oh my next milestone is three thousand dollars now when you reach a thousand instead of patting yourself on the back and say yes i did Ch- pop a champagne no oh let's hustle more now i'm going to make three grands and then you make three and then you're like oh let's make door 15 15, 20 30 
And that's and it's always about having more. It's like you get a car, you get like let's say you get a Toyota, and like you know, you're like no, my next car is gonna be a Caddy, and then you get your Caddy. It's like my next car is gonna be a Mercedes, and then you get your Mercedes. You're like my next car is gonna be a Lambo. It's like there's never a limit of your achievements, and that's not a bad thing. But it's like whatever you achieve, at least enjoy it. That's right. That's right. Which is what we don't do actually a whole lot of the time. And by things, we are even talking to、uh, talking about relationships, right? Like we don't care about appreciating our families, our friends, our partners, our kids. You know, like how many times have we sat around? You know, instead of just literally looking into the eye of someone and saying, "Hey, how are you feeling? Are you okay?" Do you feel good? Do you want to just have a glass of wine? No, it's always about you know. Oh my God, this is how my day was. It was so crappy, and、yeah. you know why、We're、was it、so、crappy? We're so self-centered. You know, we are self-centered, and that's that's a problem. On the, the one of the biggest reasons that we all we all are self-centered prior to awakening is because our ego makes everything in the world about itself. Everything is about it. You know that's why we get we take things personally. Somebody comes and cuts you off while you're driving. You feel like they are trying to screw you, so you just go like,、eh, eh, eh. you know what I mean? It's not about you. They were just in a rush. You don't know what happened. Don't take it personally. But we do it because everything is about us. Everything is about us. We had a long day. Well, we don't care how our partner was doing. Hey, how was your day? Before they even say how it was, oh man, you you can't believe what happened to me. I had to deal with that, 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 and okay, now we just want affirmation, we just want acknowledgement, we want a hug, we want a kiss. Now that we feel like we got all that we wanted, we got the love we wanted. All right, we're done.、Uh, honey, what are we gonna have for dinner? <laughs> you know,、uh, or everything else. By the way, everything we're saying here is our experiences, plus what we see, what we witness, what we hear, what we read. Is most other people's experiences too. If you don't experience what we are saying, honestly, good for you. I'm so happy for you. And maybe you should reach out to us and give us a, a couple of pointers. But if you do feel what we are saying, then you must understand that in order for you to start appreciating life for what it is, and that is really awakening by definition. For you to understand why we are even here, why are we born into this beautiful planet? Why that life is not all misery, and we're not here to, you know, go through pain. You're actually here to love everything and enjoy everything and enjoy all the experiences that happens to you. Every second of it, every second of your life is a gift, and it's an amazing experience. That's Given to you, and if you're not enjoying it, and you know, just going with that experience, and you feel like it's a misery, and it's miserable, and it's a bad experience, then you've got life all wrong. Yeah, and to be honest, again, this this just just to make a pointer on top of what she just said, Star said, you see many people who are rich, but they're miserable. Money does not bring you happiness, and yes, money brings you security,、uh, but it doesn't bring you happiness because you will never be content. And when she says that your point, your your purpose is to love and to enjoy,、um, and to spread it, that love. That's right. That's right. But it doesn't mean that what we are saying, or at least what I say, is that. If you believe for a moment that all of life is just going to be happy, 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 enjoy, 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 that's unrealistic, not true. You're setting yourself again with expectations up for failure. That is how people get depressed. I need to be happy. I need to be rich. I need to be joyful. Why am I not joyful? Why are people on my Instagram always at parties? Why are they at different vacations? That's how people get depressed. Joy and happiness. Are not rights. They are yours to practice. You have to earn that happiness and joy through every moment, every moment of life. Even if it's a bad, sad moment, it, it is imperative that we take a stand and appreciate it for what it is. 
instead of looking at the situation as a failure, we have to look at the situation as an opportunity to learn and grow from it. It's an experience. Exactly. Any experience that you go through, they're all neutral. That's right. It it depends if you want to mark it as a bad experience or as a good experience. You know, when you go out and there's a lot of snow out there and there's a, I don't know, two-year-old, three-year-old that's like walking in the snow and they they fall. And the first thing they do is they look at their parents. And Mm -hmm. if the parents is like, oh, my God, babe, what's going on? Are you okay? Are you okay? The kid's going to obviously cry, right? Start crying, yeah. But... If the same parents goes up to the kid and it's like, oh my God, that was such a fun thing. Did you have fun? You look at you and the mom and dad, they're smiling and it looks like they're having a great time. The kid's going to start laughing too. Yeah. So. Now, obviously not if your kid lands on its head, but you know what? (laughs) On a bum bum. (laughs) You get get the point. Yeah. If they just fall on their back or something, that's so true. The kids look up to their parents. Yeah. And honestly, like. Life is just like a heartbeat. It has its ups and downs, but every experience that you go through, every second that you go through, you get to mark it as a good experience or a bad experience. And even if it's not good at the moment, if it's not if it's not happy, if it's not positive to your standards, you have to look at it in a way that it's going to help you to get to where you you are, you are going to be or you have to go and you have to, you know, get there. And that way, it's a good thing, you know? It's every experience, whether it's good or bad, it's a good experience. Does that make sense? It always makes sense. Of course it does. Uh, basically, it is life. Life life is a force, is an experience, as she says. And it's so, so, so imperative that we do not expect anything from life, but rather surrender to it. That's actually another amazing book by Michael Singer which uh, it, I guess but this, the title of it is uh, The Art of Surrender. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Payam can look it up for us. But uh, the, the, when you surrender to life, when you don't have expectations, and the only reason you have expectation is because you expect results. If you stop being results-oriented, if you don't have expectations, anything that happens is an amazing opportunity the other day actually uh star is is a very um big foodie big big foodie and uh, she it used to always be a point to in a way that i know a lot of people are like that when we would go uh yes the art of surrender a practical guide to enlighten happiness and well-being i was not wrong and here i got it pam uh thank you he's an amazing author Yes, this is a beautiful book. If anybody wants to read it too, uh, hold on, let me just, yeah, there it is. Payam, I don't know if you could show this one. Oops, you can. Very good. Uh, Oh, now we completely lost it. So uh, it's okay, The Art of Surrender. Um, What was I saying before this? Beautiful. Did we all lose it? Payam, did you, do you? Did you keep track or you were losing? Okay, beautiful. We all lost it. You said I was a big foodie and oh, I'm yes. still a big foodie. Perfect. So Star was a big, big foodie and she still is, as she says. But it, it used to be so bad that like we would talk and she'd be like, I'll be like, babe, what do you want to have like tomorrow? She'd be like, I want to have sushi. Okay, cool. So we would go for dinner and if for any reason it ended up being anything but sushi, it would just not be right. It would just be a disaster. She would get grumpy. She'd be like, no, I wanted sushi. I don't want anything else. Now, even if she loves her, for example, burger, and we go to her favorite, no, 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 no. My mind was set on sushi, so we got to go sushi. And then as a result of that, one other thing that happened is when she wanted and expected a yummy sushi, if we went to the sushi place and it ended up not being yummy, it would still be a disaster because she would just have a terrible time, right? And just recently, after her awakening last week, we went to this place that, you know, was recommended to us by by a family member. We we got we tried their food. We tried a pizza. I got a pizza. She got a burger, and uh, she was like, "I saw her like having it so slowly, and then like had half of it, and then she didn't have it." And I was like, "Baby, like, you okay?" She's like, "Yeah, it's all right." And then I was like. <laughs> okay cool you know like it's all right then it's good whatever so then 
10 minutes later she still hasn't touched it i'm like and she was hungry and i'm like babe weren't you hungry what happened with that burger that's just sitting there still getting cold she loves her food hot and she was like no i don't like it 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 was not good i was just like oh thank god you said it my pizza was bad too i didn't want to say anything to kind of start you off but now that you're saying it mine wasn't good either and the funny thing is she starts laughing and she's like ah it's so crap <laughs> i don't care about it it I was had like, zero <laughs> taste <laughs> i don't think they knew what spices were <laughs> they had like no spices in there <laughs> no racks of spices at that restaurant but the whole point is that was like and the funny thing is i was like i was like i don't know it was it was just such as i don't know such a weird experience for the first time ever in my life that i actually made a point i was like had it been any other time before my awakening i would have been like i would have been cussing i would have been so upset I would have thrown such a big fuss out of it. But now here I am like, you know, just laughing and enjoying this experience. And I was like, you know what? Tomorrow when I wake up or if I drive by the restaurant again, I'm going to see what my, you know, my uh, set of emotions. are. uh, Yeah. I'm going to see how my experience is going to be when I drive by the restaurant again. Well, say why. Because before... Because, like, (laughs) before if I would drive by them, I would be like, I would get so angry. (laughs) And I would, like, you know, I would just be like... You hold on to the negativity. (laughs) You would hold on to that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, this is such a bad place. (laughs) Like, they have the worst food ever. And who would that hurt, by the way, every time? Myself. Yeah. Because it would just ruin your day. Yeah. And then what and happened the next, the next day, day? I woke up and I thought about the experience of last night and I started laughing again. And I was like, okay, this is crazy. <laughs> and then I saw one of my friends later on the day and I was telling her the same, like the same things what I experienced the night before. And I started laughing again. I'm like, babe, this is crazy. Like I would never ever laugh or like just be like so positive and neutral about like such a bad experience that I had. Like not a bad experience, but like you know not a not yummy enjoy- food yes yes for you that would have been a b- terrible experience prior to awakening it's and the true. funny thing is like i drove by a restaurant and i'm looking at the restaurant and i'm laughing and i'm like this is insane because like yes the food wasn't up to my standards it wasn't the best food ever but like instead of having that negativity that negative emotions toward that experience that would just hold you down or yeah and like i was just so full of light and positivity and That's happy right. and like see like even right now i'm just <laughs> thinking so about glowing. it and like yeah it was insane and i'm like wow th- like honestly this new life that i have been going through is it's amazing it's so good i i'm so grateful for every second of it and it's it's just so and good. it's a constant and practice i honestly and battle, i wish way. this for everyone That's like right. i know some of you like might be like these two people are going crazy and they're just talking bullshit and crap but to be honest with you like if you experience what i don't know what he's experiencing but if what i'm experiencing if you experience it you're like what the hell was i doing all these years it's such it's such i don't know it's so it's literally you're like why was i not awake this whole time Interesting thing, another thing, interesting thing is because this is an awakening episode, I wanted to kind of point out that when we went to, because we go to our family's house every week, every weekend, uh, my parents and her parents, and this this weekend for the first time. For the first time ever, I, I actually enjoyed. Yeah, Star turned around to me in the middle of a dinner table with with her aunt, with her aunt there, with her cousin, her grandma, her parent, her parents and her brother. And she goes like, she looked at me and she's like, oh my God, I never felt the appreciation that I feel for the people around me. The experience was just such a happy experience. And I'm like, I've experienced that every week for the last whatever amount of years. And it was always just like a ritual, you know, yeah. every week you go to my mom's a house routine. It was routine, or like we yeah. go to your mom's house That's and right. it was a routine, you know, it's like, okay, it was like, a, in, it was a meeting, whatever, dinner, scheduled. Out. Yeah. And, you know, like, and the, for the first time ever, it was just so happy and That's like right. so good. And I took all of that in and, you know. And it, and it just makes a world of a difference or even just like the, f- the way we have our food, you know, simple, simple things. And the reason I want to say this is because a lot of people don't know what the awakening is. We still didn't know what it was until you would kind of get get to the other side. There is like a, 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 
the way I try to explain it is the if we are always sleeping and on a bed, you know how when you wake up just for the first five minutes, you're still like kind of like wobbly. Yeah, you're so foggy and you're just like until you go wash your face, walk around a little bit. That state of like kind of I don't know what the hell is happening. I just woke up. Oh, OK, that's good. Let's just keep going. Walking. That's your body and kind of consciousness trying to like, I guess, come in synchronization and kind of ground you and uh when you start living then you understand that you're you're awake um otherwise if you just go back to bed and you just wanted to go and drink a little bit of water you go back to sleep you don't even remember that five minutes that you were walking around for looking for your glass of water that's you that's literally what it is so w the little things in life will start becoming a world of a difference i just recently watched for the first time a bird sit on my neighbor's tree which was not even anywhere in our backyard and i was like i got so excited it was a beautiful red bird and i immediately took a photo and sent it to a star and i was like babe look what i just saw it's a bird it's a bird <laughs> and we've been like living here for <laughs> three years i didn't even realize there was there would have been birds coming around us it's just so beautiful and with that said i think we, we talked pretty good about the awakening um and i'm pretty happy with this episode i think we could um thank all of you if you're still with us uh for sticking around we are, as I said, going to try to do this better. And this is definitely our first episode. So please, if there is any problems, audio, visual, lighting, uh, anything, us not being in our own elements, do uh, be kind <laughs> and uh, uh, do give us the benefit of the doubt. We're going to hope uh, and we're going to keep on trying to make the this podcast better. The goal is for us to get, just keep putting them out instead of focusing on the quality, which was a problem of mine before. I to always be honest, to our purpose is to help people. If we can help anybody, That's that it. would be amazing. That's the main purpose we're doing this. We're not doing it to get publicity or fame or anything out of it. Literally. We're like literally just trying to do this podcast to, you know, the main purpose of life is for you to grow and to love and spread that growth and spread that love. And once you get there, then you would know what I'm talking about. But other than that, like, that's the main reason we're doing this. That's right. And uh, I think with that being said, we kind of uh, conclude this episode. And uh, we do invite you to please, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, do go ahead and uh, leave us a comment. Tell us what you think, how you're feeling about your life. If not, reach out to us on our social media. We are both on Instagram. Our Instagram handle, like our YouTube channel, is at It's Better Together with a two number two instead of TWO. And if you're listening to this podcast, please uh, do the same. Come to our Instagram over there. We ask a lot of questions from our uh, friends and fans. And based on those, we shape what we're going to talk about and how we're going to share them. <coughs> oh, my God. COVID alert. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, based on those, uh, based on the information we gather from you guys, we come out and make the next episode. So if you want to hang out or talk to us if or reach out. If you have any out, questions that you think we might have the answers to. Yeah, or, you know, if you just want to share your perspective, by all means, we want to reach out to you all as as you can see we are we are you know pretty straightforward with how we think and how we are and who we are and uh we invite you to also tag along on this journey if if that's what pleases you uh we're gonna have a lot of exciting things that i want to tell you about and uh we have some beautiful crazy guests crazy awesome guests that is uh, that I'm super, super stoked about. We've already done uh, the, the, sh the shooting with some of them and we're going to bring them on board as uh, we move forward with these podcasts. Uh, and we got a lot to deliver to you uh, on this channel, on our personal uh, channels. Uh, just reach out and say hi. That's the least we uh, we like, uh, you know, 
to do with you all just to reach out and make that human contact it's becoming more precious now than ever before because of covid because of the lockdowns we need to become closer all of us with each other especially the like-minded community uh of people who are going through the awakening and people who wish are already there and wish to help others uh, and with that said i want to thank star thank my you. beautiful partner i want to thank payam thank you payam for coming out and uh you know helping us out with this uh episode and until the next episode i say goodbye to all of you lovely people uh be wonderful be lovely stay positive smile enjoy every moment don't worry about the future don't worry about the past and we will see you at the next episode you are exactly where you are supposed to be <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs>